work together and make a real difference. What do you think? <laughs> Greener Scotland, proud sponsors of Too Good To Waste. Are you a waster? Don't worry, you're not alone, for too many of us are. From fuel to food, from cash to clothes, from power to precious time. In this series, we've confronted eight well-known Scottish personalities and challenged them to change their wasteful ways. You're like a failure. You're not a failure. I'm, I'm sure what you guys say. So when money is tight and every penny counts... I was going to buy you a pint, but um, I can't afford it now. Why squander your cash when you could be banking it? That's what we're using. That's, using. I mean, that's scary. It's time to teach our biggest wasters the error of their ways. <laughs> I'm shocked. And show them how it should be done. So, to get the keys for the motor. This is the last programme of the series and the spotlight's on world-renowned athlete Liz McColgan and football pundit Chick Young. Tonight, Liz gets whipped into shape. First thing, unwrap your arms. Liz, take it off. Well, let's get down some work. Chick turns on the charm. I bet you I do my hair quicker than you do your hair. I bet you do. But I don't know if you're a hairy back man. Well, <laughs> need to buy me a drink first. <laughs> and Liz takes control of her cash. You know, I know what I should be doing, and I know what you're saying is right, and then I need to find the time where I could sit down and actually uh, work all this out. This is Too Good To Waste. Liz McColgan lives on the outskirts of Carnoustie in Angus. As a mother of five, four of the kids are under the age of 12. Liz has her work cut out. Okay, Kieran, time to get up. Manila. Liz leads a hectic lifestyle, leaving her extremely time poor. I think, like, as an athlete, I sort of dictated a lot of, you know, what I did and how I trained and, um, you know, I was fairly successful at that level and um, I find now that because, um, you know, you're dealing with the kids and your own and, uh, you know, they're still young kids as well and you kind of sometimes run around with, like, a chicken, a headless chicken and, you know, you're sort of flapping about. What's wrong? So you only go to the toilet if there's a spider. I just never take the time to actually sit down and actually work out weekly, you know, what am I going to do? I just deal with things as it happens. Next up, it's Chick Young, footballing pundit extraordinaire. He lives in the south side of Glasgow with his partner Celine and two of his stepkids. You've reached Mr Cynic, old school, hard to change my ways. I passed the test in some ways. I'm obsessive about my bins. I think I remember phoning Celine from Japan or Hong Kong or somewhere at four in the morning asking her if she'd put the bins out. And with a whole fleet of gas-guzzling toys, Chick could easily save himself some cash. I'm not saying Jeremy Clarkson is my god, but, you know, if that's your luxury and you want to have a nice car or a motorbike or a boat or anything else that requires vast amounts of diesel and petrol, then, you know, we're going to stop people having any enjoyment at all. I'm not going to be a yes man. I'll make up one mind, but convince me. We love a good challenge. We need to convince Liz and Chick that by making a few simple changes, they can free up time and hopefully save some cash. So do Liz and Chick have the slightest idea where they need help the most? There is a lot of... Uh problems with heating. Um, you know, we find that the bedrooms are really cold, it doesn't retain the heat very well even when you blast up the radiators. The expense of doing that is has been snowballing sort of out of control really. This is a very old house. I mean this I pay my insurance against Viking grades still in this house. I know this is not working at, at, at fuel efficiency. I like fuel efficiency with uh, a double one in the middle is probably what, what's happening here. We've been checking out Liz and Chick's every move and now we're sending them to a mystery location to confront the cost of their wasteful ways. And typically, Chick is travelling in his own unique way.
Not only does he own a car and motorbike, he's gone all James Bond on us. Or is that para handy? Either way, Chick certainly likes to travel in style. Anyone would think he fancies his chances as a bit of an international playboy. Liz will be joining Chick as they set sail to a top secret location. Hello. How about you see you down? Nice to see you. Steady there, Chick. You don't have to be quite so international. Welcome nice aboard the good ship forever Ooh. young after you. Thank you. But it's more than just a lovely day out for Liz and Chick. They're sailing to Millport, the only town on the Isle of Great Cumbrae, just off the coast of North Ayrshire. I absolutely adore it, you know, it's just therapy. It's therapy for everything except your liver. <laughs> she tried a ten mile run, might do the same thing to you. <laughs> yes, yes. Hey Elizabeth, I need you to come here. Hold that wheel steady, hike these fenders in. Right. And you keep going like that, we'll be right. fine. So we're doing six and a half knots. Let's get some speed in. They've reached dry land and are ready to find out their biggest waste problem. Liz admits her biggest problem is lack of time and organisation in her busy lifestyle and Chick is a self-confessed cynic and petrol head that needs convincing that reducing waste could save them a few bob. Buried amongst the golden sands lies the information that contains our startling finding. Treasure chest, pirate's chest. Right, on you go. We've done the maths to see just how wasteful they are. This chest contains 2,326 pounds. This is the amount you spend between you over the national average on gas every year. <laughs> on average, Scottish households spend 740 pounds on their gas bill every year. At just over £2,000 a year, Liz is spending over three times the national average. Yeah, this is your fault. It is. It's my kids. I'll blame the kids. I'm blaming your kids. Chick is spending approximately £1,000 a year on gas. A third more than the national average. Actually, Liz, I'm ashamed. Let's go. We're going to help. <laughs> Combined, Liz and Chick are spending £2,326 more than the average Scottish family on gas per annum. Over the next few weeks, we will be sending in the experts to help them stop being a pair of wasters. We'll see Eco Queen Penny Poiser help Chick save some cash. For every one degree that you're turning that thermostat down by, you're saving 10% on your energy bill. Energy expert Joe Ferguson gives Liz some pointers to save cash and make her chilly house nice and cosy. You've given me quite a challenge, I must say. It is a good example of a type of house that is going to be hard to heat. We'll join top chef Rosemary Schrager as she dishes out instructions to a mischievous chick. Stop! This is fine. Now, at least by the end of this day, if nothing else, you will know where everything is in the kitchen. I don't know where the kitchen is. <laughs> Money expert Fergus Muirhead will share his financial wisdom with Liz. Do you know how much a credit, this credit card's costing you? Do you keep no, I don't record? actually know. You're paying 21% a year. Really? Interest. And they'll keep a video diary to chart their progress. See this wee red face? That proves something. It proves that I'm back in love with my bike again. Organisation is key when it comes to Liz's busy lifestyle. I'm just doing uh, pack lunches for all the kids, so they all have different things obviously. While the kids eat their breakfast and watch TV, Liz is like a whirlwind in the kitchen. I'm kind of running, catching myself up all the time. For any savings that I'm going to make, I have to have the kids involved because it's the kids and their lack of understanding. I've been quite lenient in that way as well, whereas I'm needing to be a little bit more aware of what they're doing and give a bit more guidance, probably. Liz is just too busy to plan and organise and could really do with some expert advice. We're sending in talented chef and author Rosemary Schrager. She's going to use her management know-how to get Liz and her kids into an efficient routine. 
right. What the children do to help? Do they at least tidy their rooms? And they don't know. None of the kids tidy the rooms. Nothing. Right. That's why I'm saying I run okay. around like picking up after them. The first thing they all have to do every single day, every single one, is make their beds before they come down for breakfast. Just pull their bed up, okay? Now, when they go to bed, all of them have to clear their floors, all right? Just get them used to thinking about mm. helping. They don't have to do very much, but they yeah. need to get thinking about helping. You are going to have to really stick with this, because mm. otherwise it's gonna fall down, all right? Because the main thing is for you is you've got to give yourself some time. Now, they've got to help you. No, Liz, they've got to help you, okay? Yeah. Winning Liz over to Rosemary's rules is not going to be that easy. I have seen your shopping list. Yeah. Where are your fresh vegetables? I don't get an awful lot of vegetables Liz, because Liz, they won't eat them. As they won't eat them, we need to find ways for them to eat it. Being organised in the kitchen will be a real time saver for Liz. Rosemary's off to inspect the food cupboards. This is your store cupboard. So. <laughs> this is your store cupboard. Put this up there. This is totally the wrong place. Right, okay, so, right, show me what else have you got. Yeah. It's a bit bare. Uh, what's in here? Hang on. That's the yeah, biscuit covered for. But I really do think you've let them get away with it. Yeah. You've got loads of crisps, loads of sweets, yeah. loads of things. You know what, Liz, you're going to have to recreate yourself. Okay. You I agree with you. All yeah. right. We'll join Liz and Rosemary later as they cook up a storm in the kitchen. Eco Queen Penny Poyser is an author and journalist on waste busting. Armed with top tips, she's on her way to try and convince Chick to reduce his wasteful ways. Item number one on the agenda is that huge gas bill. I'd like to talk to you about your boiler. Just yeah, new, yeah, your actual boiler. What is your thermostat set at, sir, for this house? 2021, unless someone has adjusted it. <clears throat> uh, feels warmer in here than that. I would say it's closer to 25. Spot on, Penny. I think you need to turn it down to, to 21 maximum, because every, for every one degree that you're turning that thermostat down by, you're saving 10% on your energy bill. So it's really significant. Chick could save up to £100 a year by turning his thermostat down by one notch. Are your family big fans of the shower? Do they like spending a long time well, in the shower? Well, you see, that's interesting because I am a bath man. I like a big, deep, hot bath. I am mistress of the five-minute shower, you see. I bet you I do my hair quicker than you do your hair. I bet you do. <laughs> I'm not disagreeing with you there. But I don't know if you're a hairy back man. <laughs> well, <laughs> need to buy me a drink first. No. Do you know what your, the temperature of your water is set at? I like my water to come bubbling out the tap. Yeah. Until your third degree burns. That's what I yeah, yeah, excellent. And then mix it with the cold water. Well, really, your water doesn't need to be any hotter than 60 degrees coming out of the tap. So you pay for water to get really hot and then you put cold water That's in it. it. Yeah. yeah, I see that. It's kind of counterintuitive, that one, isn't it? You know. Get to know your boiler. Because a lot of people are scared of their boilers. You know, it's just a thing that accumulates dust and costs you a lot of money. So check the thermostat and also check what temperature your hot water is set at. And I guarantee you'll be saving money. Thank you very much. The penny has dropped. <laughs> Heating and hot water accounts for nearly 80% of total energy used in the home. So with a few simple changes, it is quite possible to save a third of your energy bill. Visit stv.tv forward slash too good to waste for more cost cutting tips. Rosemary is trying to crack Liz's busy schedule. Careful planning and organisation in the kitchen could free up some precious time and money. Many of Liz's meals are made in a rush and are unplanned, which means lots of needless car journeys to the shops. From this, you can get loads of meals. First of all, chicken. We'll roast some chicken. Yeah. Then what we can do is make a stock from the carcass. We're yeah. going to cook a ham. Okay. First thing, unwrap your arms. <laughs> you look as if you're not doing anything at all. So, take your, no, take that off, your jersey off. Oh, take it off, take it off, take it off. 
Liz, take it off. Come on, let's get down some work. With a budget of £80, Rosemary shows Liz how she can make multiple meals for the family. Let's bunk some bacon in here. A little bit of tarragon in there, why not? There's nowhere to hide, Liz. Best knuckle down and get on with it. You're going to take your fingers underneath like that and just... No, what are you doing? What are... Oh. No, God, what are you doing? Look, <laughs> you're meant to be doing this underneath. What were you taking it off for? I don't like skin and chicken. <laughs> Please rinse your hands. And we'll forget about it. OK, but I thought we were making lots of meals. Next on the list is cooking a ham. Right. Off you go, pop that on the stove please. And let's forget about it. If you say so, Rosemary. She's like a spinning top in the kitchen. Right, we've got the ham on, the chicken in. We're going to now just make some bread. What kind of bread will it be? Well, I don't bread yet now. It's a bit of a mixture. <laughs> Not quite sure at the moment, a bit of wholemeal. How much are you making? I don't know. All right. A kilo. <laughs> See, I like it. <laughs> I'm going to pour a little bit of water in there. We'll just bung it in. <laughs> It's my sort of cooking. <laughs> it's the best kind of cooking. Now, what, what I'd like you just to do is to literally um, push it with your hand, roll it, turn, push, roll, turn, and just keep doing it. Off you go. Okay, don't tell me you couldn't quickly do that. Uh, of a weekend or something, yeah, I could sit here and do all this, but during the week is another problem altogether. All right, but even if you ended up with the children doing it with the kids. Oh, they'd love it. Now, we've got a nice round ball. Does it feel nice? It does. Oh, looks good. Oh, wow. It's really good. Are you happy? It? Very good. Looks very tasty, actually. My skin looks better than Apart from my skin that I burst. From a decidedly chilly beginning, Liz and Rosemary are forming quite a double act. <laughs> Go on, bun it on. And look, just do that. I don't care. <laughs> it doesn't matter what you do. Just bung it in. Take a spoon and really get all that up and put it in there. Into this. Yes, please. All those flavours. You've got to learn to make this fun for yourself. Yeah. All right? Have a bit of fun. Because cooking to you, I'm feeling, is very serious. What I'd like you to do is find your inner self of wanting to... <laughs> My inner self. <laughs> your inner self of wanting to cook. <laughs> Rosemary's know-how has shown Liz how she can definitely save money and time. Five meals for five people at the cost of £80. That's just £3.20 per person per meal and all made in just over an hour. Although you're cooking one particular dish, you're actually preparing it for another one as well. So, you know, like the stock for the soup and I'm um, always the chicken ahead. for the risotto. And so, I, yeah, and there's no waste. Even put the vegetable bits no. in with but the stock. But I throw all that out. So, uh, you use it all. We've cut down food, we've cut down miles, we've cut down money. Yeah. So think about that. We just need to come back every weekend. <laughs> we'll join them later when Rosemary rounds up the kids to help their mum in the kitchen. Spending money in the shops isn't the only way to get food. You can also grow your own and get stuck into gardening. Pete Jackson is going to introduce Chick to the joys of greenhouse gardening. I am a cynical man when it comes to all this. If you can turn me into a gardener, then you are indeed a magician. You've got a challenge on your hands, Pete. I'm really uh, excited to get you growing some stuff from seed and using the greenhouse um, as a sort of starting point um, and making sure that you get out into the garden on a weekly basis and um, you know see how they're coming on perfect time of year to be thinking about you know growing your own when we sow the seeds they need some um, artificial heat to get them going what did you actually buy i can see you've gone for oh, you're a man onions. who knows his onions i know my onions yes, <laughs> yes, yes, yes. and my tomatoes early spring is the perfect time of year for chick to start sowing salad vegetables and these will grow perfectly in your greenhouse in some pots back end of the summer with the lettuce and your tomatoes you don't need to be running off down the road and um, picking up food off the supermarket shelf it's right here in your garden and if you've got a little bit surplus set yourself a little table up at the front gate put your hat on now you're talking market po and with his new greenhouse chick should have a plentiful supply of green leaves and juicy tomatoes all summer saving Chick a few quid at the supermarket. 
we're going to start your horticultural production right here. And I tell you what, perfect size for me. I know you come in, you're only five foot two. And it's that's what it's actually, really. <laughs> the, the thing is, I could set myself a little chair up here. You could just bring out cups of tea. I could be your private gardener, couldn't I? I think Fancy we can talk. I think we can talk. Looks like Pete's hired, or could that be trapped? There's Chick's garden. And um, you if you don't, yeah, okay, cool. I'll, I'll give you an arm corner coffee in a Rosemary has hopefully inspired Liz that simple home cooking can save time and money. Five meals for five people at the cost of £80, all made in just over an hour. Time to get the kids involved. I know it's dead easy to say, OK, let's get into a routine and keep to this, but in my lifestyle, I can't do that. Right. Your mind is elsewhere. It's showing in every cupboard, <laughs> everywhere. Your mind is everywhere but in the kitchen. We need to find some time. Rosemary's devised a healthy regime for family mealtimes. Would you like to help your mother in lots of different ways? Yes. Right. So what I suggest is that at night, you spend about 20 minutes getting your lunch ready. Because what we don't want is lunch is left over that you throw in the bin. It's a waste of food. You can make your own wraps and sandwiches. Here we are. Time to get the kids involved. Right, what we've done is we've done a sort of menu. What we don't want you to do is eat crisps anymore. You have to have fresh food. All right, it's, your mummy is really going to give this a go. So all I'm going to say to you is, your tatties are in the oven. Would you like some supper? Yes! Yes? Yeah. OK. Everyone is tucking in. I know that I'm kind of running around ragged and doing everything and getting nothing done, if you know what I mean. So uh, at least it gives us more time to spend as a family, preparing things, eating together. It's the best option, so I'm more than willing to give it a go. Do you know what? I think it's going to be wonderful. Hopefully Liz is now much closer to making the most out of every minute. Liz has a large Victorian house that's a nightmare to heat. The kids are always complaining that, you know, the house is cold. You know, when we get up for school in the morning, Kieran's always sitting with a jacket on him. <laughs> and he's probably got about a half an hour to go before he goes out the door. I just need to try and get some advice on how I can make it more family friendly for us. With a staggering gas bill of over £2,000, she needs some serious help. We're sending in top energy consultant, Joe Ferguson. You've given me quite a challenge, I must say. Um, it's, a, it's a lovely house, but it is a good example of the type of house that is going to be hard to heat. Do you have any idea how many kilowatt hours of electricity you use over a week or a month or a year, or how much gas you're using? To be honest, you know, I really don't. I mean, I just get the bills and pay them. I, I really don't. I wouldn't even need a meter. That's I absolutely part of the course. Reading the gas meter regularly is a great way of keeping track of energy usage. Liz thinks this would be a great job for the kids. What your son needs to do is take a note of that figure there. Every, every day, day. Do every morning for this school. That's good. That's ideal. Joe's going to start with a look at the boiler. You've got a lot of uninsulated pipes here. It's nice and cosy in here, but there's no one here to enjoy it. It's probably warmer in the house. It probably is. <laughs> Replacing boilers 15 years old or older could save up to 30% on heating bills. Next, Joe's going to check the attic for insulation. Right. You have got insulation, you'll be well, glad to good. hear. It's not very much. All right. It's probably about half what you ought to have. Really? You would notice a difference. If you get that done, uh, that increased, not very expensive, but you would certainly feel cosier. Topping up loft insulation is a great way to save some cash. It could cost Liz as little as £170 to add the insulation needed in the loft. Employing simple measures like checking the loft insulation and keeping an eye on the meter can really help save some money and make a warmer, cosier home. If you're serious about cutting your energy use, you have to know how much you're using and where it's going. And importantly, you need to have a, a will to save. We've seen top chef Rosemary crack the whip with Liz when it comes to time management and cooking skills. 
Now it's Chick's turn to get the once over from Rosemary. Will you show me your cupboard so I can find out exactly what you have? Yeah. Uh, right. Do you know what you have? No, these are cupboards, so I'm sure it's. Um... Well, that's a, that's a fact. <laughs> these are food cupboards! Food cupboards, yeah. Chick! <laughs> 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 this is just rehearsals. Do that. that one. Would you like to see the glass? I don't know. You don't know where your food is. <laughs> that one. There you go. Oh, it's food. One. Right, okay. Oh, I hope you're ashamed of yourself. It doesn't take long for Rosemary to root out Chick's wasteful habits, especially all that unused food in the bin. What? <gasps> now look, this is serious. Oh, I tell you what, because I can't stand this, just get me a bag, just get me a bag to put the food in one and the plastic containers right. in the other. Do this. This is the food that's going in there. This is disgusting. You're putting this in a bin. Why are you throwing all that away? That's money. Rosemary needs to give Chick a lesson on how he can stop wasting food. I think you've got to cook. You don't want just the same particular, you know? I certainly don't. I want you to cook now. Chick, if, oh, no, wait, stop again. Don't say a word. This is condensed in a very short period of time. I really need to be here for a week. But actually... <laughs> Rosemary's doing a good job of scaring the living daylights out of Chick. But he needs to know how to plan his shopping if he wants to stop wasting food. And on today's menu, there will be a leek and potato soup, a veggie pie and a fruit crumble. Easy peasy. How many leeks do we need? Four leeks, please. Okay, this is all seasonal stuff here, which is brilliant. So now we've got to get a crumb, we're going to make a crumble. Right, well, that's straightforward. You can use a thing called crumble mix. There you go, that's what we need. We, we are going to make a crumble and pastry, right? How long are you staying here for? Uh, just one day. Crumble mix, we need the crumble mix. Oh, I insist. Come on, I've got one, no. I've got one ingredient, crumble mix. Move on, move on, move on. Alright, that is your only ingredient you're allowed. Thankfully they've survived the supermarket. Back home they have an array of ingredients to get busy with and it's not long before Rosemary's got chick working like the clappers. I'm going to be doing the chopping for you because I think it'll be quicker and you're going to do all the cooking. Are you happy with that? Delirious. <laughs> I'm your slave for the day. I'm your slave. Let's get, let's get the video of that. Easy there, Chick. First job is making the pastry. You could easily do this. Now, come on, stop making noises. Get your hands in there. Have you, you've never made pastry in your life, have you? It's like playing in the beach as a wee boy and building sandcastles. You're going to now take this and bring it together. Off you go. Come on, bring it together. Oh, bring it into, a, into a nice paste. Oh! Take it all off your fingers, Dad. So take it all off. I don't want to leave any mine. Just take it off. I'm trying to take it off, woman! the other hand. <laughs> okay, that's really good, actually. Okay. How do you write in for MasterChef? Can you please get... Grease with paper, anything will do. Tim foil, grease yes, with paper. Yes, I know! You should be ashamed of yourself. Oh, do you want to hang no, on? stop! This is fine. Now, at least by the end of this day, if nothing else, you will know where everything is in the kitchen. I know where the kitchen is. <laughs> Right, okay, come on, get some energy. You're too slow. You're going to have to learn to multitask today. And will you turn the oven on as well, please? The oven. Turning on the oven. Ooh, that's a tricky one, chick. Right, would you please now put this into the pie? Is that um, sweet? This is, um, this is parsnip. You can't eat raw parsnip, it's disgusting. Oh, excuse me. Um, I think you're allergic to me. <laughs> no, I'm not there. Honestly, they're best pals. The leek and tatty soup is on and the veggies are on for the pie. The pudding is next. I'm doing you the most amazingly healthy meal. It's wonderful with food, when you get food and it's of the season and you just really enjoy it. Look at the colour. I, I love the colour. I love it about. Right, you're going to put this all over the top. That's it. Pop that in. Now, take that with the holes in. <laughs> Sounds like a tribute band. <laughs> take right. that with the holes in. Now you're going to take this, you're going to pop this into here like that. A healthy, wholesome veggie pie. Maybe you'll be able to use your greenhouse veggies next that's time, right. Chick. Right, that's enough. Will you get your pastry, please? This is one I prepared earlier. <laughs> now, the thing about this pie is you could put beans in there. Wouldn't that be lovely? 
You, you would. Why do we not make a bean pie? Because, hang on. Right, right, you're going to put that on top, please. Chick's pastry has turned out a treat. A few finishing touches before it's ready for the oven. Don't do this with slippy, eggy hands. Now, your meal's ready. No, it's not. Yes, it is. Okay. All we've got to do is wait for it to be cooked. OK. And then we can eat. So, come on, I'll take you for a pizza. What are we? <laughs> no! Wow! Look at that! And look! Marvellous, look at that! Isn't that gorgeous? Right, well, I think the proof will be in the pudding. Ta -da. Ta -da. <laughs> More importantly, what will Chick's partner Celine think of his efforts? Time for the big taste test. Looks great. That looks so good. Actually, that is good. <laughs> <laughs> well, the thing about this is that, you know, there's no wastage here. Everything is locally bought, locally sourced, so it's really, really special. Everything is in season, so it's buying at the right time, and it's just so delicious. It's so easy to do. And the other thing is that the quantity here is enormous, and what it cost us is so little, That's and we made it go a long, long way. So for a sum of £30, Chick has rustled up a large three-course dinner to feed a family of four. Any leftovers can be frozen and used at a later date. Uh, absolutely. <laughs> Log on to stv.tv forward slash too good to waste for more details on all the recipes cooked by both Liz and Chick. Liz is used to running about at breakneck speed, but with four kids under the age of 12, she needs ways to reduce her stressful and hectic schedule. The kids' schools are only like a mile away and two miles away, and they've got bikes and all this sort of stuff, but I drive them up and pick them up to come home. I think I would like to save more on the petrol that I'm driving about on. Getting the kids to cycle to school could be a good option. Richard Andrews is a bike doctor with the Bike Station. They're based in Glasgow, Edinburgh and Perth and promote the benefits of cycling. Richard's going to fix the kids' bikes. The kids are just typical kids, you know, like they, they go on their bikes and they'll run in for something to eat and they just leave the bikes literally scattered all over yeah. the garden. So we're just going to go through them and see if there's anything that obvious that we can fix today to hopefully get them on the road. And looking at this one, obviously, Dead flat tyre there, <laughs> absolutely bone dry chains. You know, things like, yeah, again, flat tyre there, flat as you can tire. see. Rusty chain there, <laughs> great block, way out of alignment there. But um, we'll see what we can do and uh, hopefully get them on the road. Okay, that'd be good. Letting your children walk or cycle to school could save around £120 each year compared to driving them in the average car. Tires pumped and chains oiled, the kids' bikes are fixed and ready for action. They can now get in the saddle and cycle to school and save their mum precious time during her hectic day. Chick's a self-confessed gas guzzler and could do with cutting down on his fuel bills. Cycling could be a good option. Bike doctor Richard is going to give Chick's bike a full examination. Okay, Richard, this bike is not suffering from overuse. Yeah, I Spiders have made it home. Yeah, I noticed them. Well, uh, hopefully if we, uh, if we give it a once-over right now, then you'll be able to get out on it a bit more as well. I believe you, you still do exercise, don't you? You still play football I do still play football, yeah, yeah. yeah. But um, not the bike. Yeah, well... <laughs> Although some of the boys think that might be a good idea. Yeah. <laughs> well, maybe you could, like, tie it in and, you know, it would actually benefit, um, you know, your football if you were to potentially, like, commute on the bike, for example. Um, so if you get some cycle training, you know, typically within a couple of hours, you can, you know, become more confident on the road itself and know the, the road etiquette. So um, with a little bit of advice, you can go a long way, yeah. Robbie Hawthorne is a cycling coordinator at the bike station. He's going to give Chick a few top tips. I noticed, Rob, that you aren't dressed like Chris Hoy, uh, and I certainly neither am I. I certainly wouldn't compare myself to Chris Hoy, that's for sure. You know people go into things and suddenly they take up running, they've got all the gear, everything expensive, designer. But people go out and they buy all the gear and then they maybe never use the bike, so I say buy a kind of a reasonable bike at a reasonable price to, to start off with. 
um, and then get cycling. I'm going to bore this. This is going to this is going to get me cycling again. Really, I can not actually go to the Chick has a gentle limber up around the park before getting out on the open road. Observe foot's coming right and left. You don't get a nasty surprise. It's all about anticipation and observation. Same I'm as pretty that. happy about riding double file. Oh, this is fine. Um, we've got plenty of space here. Um, definitely within your rights to do that. It's very exhilarating, isn't it? Definitely. A wee bit of air range I've got was fantastic. <laughs> Good way to start the day. You know what? That was absolutely fantastic. It uh, brought back my youth. Absolutely, definitely guarantee I'm for getting back on a bike. Throughout the last few weeks, Liz and Chick have been capturing their efforts with the use of video diaries. Liz's kids have been getting stuck in to help mum. Okay, just going to film Martin doing his electricity meter reading. See this wee red face? That proves something. It proves that I'm back in love with my bike again. But that's not the only thing that's going well. Bear with me. How about the plants? Look at that. It's not quite amazing. I think I could uh, get right into this. Chico, you're the man. Rob Liddle, ex-police commander and instructor with the Institute of Advanced Motoring, is going to assess Chick's particulars when it comes to fuel-efficient driving. I'm your official chauffeur. Do you want the cap on? Or just... Uh, <laughs> you're going to teach me how to save money driving. Smarter driving can save you between £250 and £300 a year if you're a commuter. That's a 15% saving on your fuel bill, which is around two months worth of fuel a year. Rob will gauge just how fuel efficient Chick's driving is by repeating a seven mile journey several times. On this first journey, Chick has an average of 30.5 miles per gallon. It's really about changing your driving style. So we introduce you to a little thing that's called squeeze and ease. Okay? Sounds like a good night, eh? <laughs> what we're actually doing is we're just squeezing the gas gently uh -huh. and at every opportune moment we're going to ease it back. So we can in actual fact save quite a bit of fuel. Rob has more smart driving tips that will help Chick maximise his fuel efficiency. Accelerate smoothly at all times. Take the highest gear possible and hold it for as long as possible. Anticipate gradients and always select the appropriate gear. Lift off the gas when you see a potential stop. Armed with Rob's words of advice, can Chick put it all into practice? You see, the thing about this type of driving, it's the thinking man's driving. It's for people who want to be intelligent drivers. If you can minimise your braking, you will maximise your fuel consumption. Where are you looking just now? How far ahead are you looking? I'm looking as far as the lights, wondering if okay. it. So what we're doing is we're squeezing and easing that little touch in your gas and then easing it back. Take my foot off the gas, I'm cruising up. I'm sure the guy not, behind me is not deliriously happy, but... Oh, yes, look at that, he never mm. Brilliant. This time around he has an average of 34 miles to the gallon, a saving of nearly 4 miles. One of the great things about this style of driving is you're removing a lot of stress from your driving and at the same time you're doing it far more economically and it makes a far safer way of driving. What time is the school prize giving? <laughs> the gold star for that one. Liz needs help when it comes to planning and organisation. We're sending in top finance expert Fergus Muirhead to help Liz stop wasting her cash. Does money interest you? It does interest me because I like to spend it. <laughs> and I'm now 47 years old and I'm not a professional athlete anymore, so I haven't got access to that income that I once did. So to me, it's really important to have um, you know, whatever money that I've got working for me now. Fergus offers a solution that could help pay for that blasted gas bill. Can I start with this, Liz? Do you know how much a credit this credit card's costing you? Do you keep no, I don't actually, no, no. It's got a monthly interest rate of at 1.736%. Is that a good or bad? Oh, it's not terrible. It's terrible <laughs> it really? because if you multiply that by 12, it means you're paying 21% a year. Really? Interest. 
Uh, there's, there's tons of credit cards that have got 0% interest. So if I was you, my starting point would be to stop using this credit card for your monthly expenditure okay. and you've suddenly saved £1,200 a year. Next up, Liz finds out more ways to manage her money. People don't budget because they see it as a very negative thing. They see it as a way of somebody telling them how to stop spending money. Okay. But for me, it's a, it, it tells you how you can spend money. And the way to start doing it is to know what you're currently spending money on. So if I asked you what your what your monthly expenditure was, would you would you know what that number was? No, I wouldn't have a clue. No, no, I wouldn't have a clue. I'm probably not as organised as what I should do because I'm trying to do 101 things all at once and probably not doing anything right. I'm just trying to get on top of that and and see, you know, make sure that the bills are getting paid. Firstly, organisation will be the key to keeping Liz's household finances fit. So this, the starting point for me would be for you to sit down with your bank statements for the month and, and, and with a list of everything that you're spending. And then once you've done that, once you've got a list of everything that you've spent, then you can go into each one in detail. You know, I know what I should be doing and I know what you're saying is right and it's just finding the time and I need to find the time where I could sit down and actually uh, work all this out and, and uh, get it sorted because at the end of the day it's just that it's unorganised it's, you know, it's, it's there, it's, it's, it's I just need to organise it, it. it once. all you yeah. have to do is maintain it after that exactly. it, it, it's a time consuming exercise that, that quite literally will save mm -hmm. you thousands of pounds yeah. you let your money control you mm -hmm. rather than you having any control yeah. over your money and I think yeah. you could save yourself a fortune She's talking already about going to cancel that credit card. She's talking about rejigging re her mortgage a bit. She's talking about doing a budget. She's talking about getting to grips with her pension. There's lots of things that we talked about even in that very short space of time. That if she stops doing a hundred things and concentrates on these three or four, I think it'll see her in really good stead in the months to come. Log on to stv.tv forward slash too good to waste for more financial top tips from Fergus. We're bringing Liz and Chick together to find out just how they were affected by the too good to waste experience and especially their sky high gas bills. Two and a half thousand pounds between us, too much. Far and that's quite a good really. night out. <laughs> it's making a really good night out. <laughs> Even the Calusti. Definitely. I should not pull that and keep you in the air for five years. Five years, exactly. Two and a half thousand, that's a lot, isn't it? That's it? a lot. You know, that's a big shock to me. And I need to I need to actually take the effort now and just take my little step of changing that. And I think like even just a little step will save me a lot. It's funny, I'm definitely driving my car in a different way. I'm using less fuel, definitely. Even just a, a, a good process just to actually sit down and look at how you drive about because you, you just add miles up without even thinking, you know, I'll drive into the bank, I'll drive into the schools, I'll drive into the laundry, I'll drive into the shops and it's like, well, you could do that in one journey if you really think about it. Saving your petrol on 12 saving miles. saving my petrol. Think about that. There's a lot of uh, wasted driving about in my part. I started to enjoy the gardening thing and I kind of poo-pooed that privately, but actually I've been in checking my <laughs> lettuces, my corn's coming up. You know, I'll probably start doing cotton before the summer's out. <laughs> <laughs> Make more jersey. <laughs> You're just not going to adopt everything 100%. Yes. And I'm a big cynic, you know. But yeah, I've been, I've changed. For me, it's a big thing about planning that's going to really save me a lot of the, the energy and the, the cost of going about. Work together and make a real difference. What do you think? Scotland, proud sponsors of Too Good To Waste.